from YouTube to our Sunday morning celebration service. But before we get started, I always like to share with you to click subscribe and like so we can continue to expand our viewership on our YouTube channel. And also, I want you to remember that every single Wednesday at 7 p.m., we have our words of encouragement during the middle of the week to just bless you and lift you up so that you will understand that God loves you and cares about you and your family as well. You can always find us on YouTube at New Covenant World Ministries Live. Once again, you can find us at New Covenant World Ministries Live. Also, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for always supporting our ministry, for all your prayers and, and concern for us. We love you so much, but don't forget to join us in public worship because we're here every Sunday at 11 a.m. Well, before we get started, let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, I just thank you once again for the power and anointing of your spirit. I thank that you're Lord of Lords, you're King of Kings, you're the El Shaddai, you're the all-sufficient one, you're Almighty God. And I know that you love each and every one of us, Father God. And Father, I know that we're in a time of such struggles and stress and complaints and discouragement and depression, but we know that you have something good for us. And Father, that's why we're gathering here together to just glorify and magnify you and lift you up. And Father, I thank in advance what you're about to do in this wonderful service. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In the mighty and awesome name of your son, Jesus, and everybody in this house and in YouTube said, Amen and Amen. We serve a wonderful and a powerful God. And we're in the days when we need the Lord more than ever before. Amen. Believe you me. Well, let's see what the Lord has for us today. In this journey that we call life, that we all are experiencing, there's really one thing that impacts all of our lives, and that's change. Everyone faces some kind of change every single day in their lives. It could be a change in our circumstances, in the weather, in our plans, the death of a loved one, our marriage, the birth of a new child, a new job, or even our health. But I believe change affects every man, every woman, and every child on this earth. And we all deal with change in a very different way. Now there are two events in our lives that will occur that are totally out of our control. That's change and of course death. So I've come to the conclusion that it's not circumstances or even change that dictates my life, but how I choose to handle changes and disruptions that come in my life. Now in order to effectively deal with this, we must learn how to deal with the challenge of change. And this is the title of my message for you today. It doesn't matter what kind of change that you're really experiencing in life. You must learn how to deal with it and live with the impact of that change. When you have to deal with change, do you fall back into your old patterns of fear and negative behavior? Or do you really seek God for your direction? Now, I'm not suggesting to you you should ignore help from supportive networks or of concerts or family and friends. But the Bible says, but first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. So if we desire to properly handle change, then we must, through the Holy Spirit, seek to obey the commands of Jesus Christ, possess his righteousness, which is really his way of doing things, remain separated from the world and reveal his love toward every single person that we meet. And you know, it seems like it's real difficult in the times we're living in to really sincerely love one another. It seems like people would rather hate somebody or, or find something wrong with them than just give out love. You know, giving out love is really pretty simple. It's really not being selfish. Oh. See, I believe when this is accomplished, then you will recognize and use the proper spiritual tools. I'm talking about this 
awesome, awesome challenge or change. I believe you recognize and use the proper tools that are already provided by the Lord to deal with any change that's coming to you. I believe your personal relationship with Jesus will cause you to have the insight and perspective that will push you forward. See, it's always about pushing forward in life and not looking backwards. I believe if you really deal with this change and recognize it, it'll push you forward in the right direction and help you deal with the change, which is really part of the process. Now I want you to understand that change is not to be feared, but looked upon as a normal part of our journey of life. We should look at change as an opportunity. Continually growing in Christ and increase our faith will be helpful as we present the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost world. As we learn to properly deal with the changes, I mean the changes of our life, I believe it will help us and others who are struggling and don't have any idea about what to do. Now you have the answer through Jesus Christ. And you can bear witness and provide insight and direction to how to deal with change. Now, in spite of the changes, challenges, chaos, we may experience, I believe this, that life is still a wonderful journey when God is in the equation. However, when we take a look at life, everything has a beginning and it has an end. And things that were there yesterday might not be there tomorrow. Let me show you what I'm talking about in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 14. And I'd like to read it from the Amplified Bible. Here's what it says. Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen tomorrow. What is the nature of your life? You are really a wisp of vapor, a puff of smoke, a mist that is invisible for a little while and then disappears into the air. I believe we not only have to deal with change, but enjoy every single moment we have with our spouses, our children, and significant others, and our family. Now, as I've shared with you in my recent message, I believe family is everything. But God is first. I don't think you got that. I said that family is everything, but God has to be first. Because the only way that you're going to handle the changes that come in you and your family is first, like I indicated, is to seek God first. We have to stay in the presence of God in this time consistently. We can't just choose to be with God today and tomorrow we don't care about it. We have to seek His presence every single day. And in fact, with the chaos we're going through, we need to seek Him more than one time during the day. If we can find the time to eat three times a day, <laughs> we can certainly find time to spend with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's going to be important to your survival and the way you survive. See, God, matter of fact, let me say something else. God doesn't want us just to survive. He wants us to thrive. He wants us to enjoy all this life that we have. He's already provided the good life for us, but we kept, keep getting in the way, not recognizing how much He really loves us and cares about us and provides it everything we needed up front. The Word of God says that He supplied all of our needs through His riches and His glory, His Son, who? Christ Jesus. Everything you need, listen to me, stop being so upset about life and recognize Every single thing you need has been provided by our Lord and our Savior. If you believe Him, if you trust in Him, and if you walk in His Word, guarantee He will show up and make sure you have what you need. You know, it seems like life is moving so fast that now we're approaching Christmas. Next thing you know, it'll be New Year's 2023. So I'm suggesting you make the most of the time that God gives you. I'm not talking about going out doing crazy things in the world. But I'm talking about spending more quality time with the Lord and with your family. See, I believe when you accept the reality that Jesus desires for you to have the best, then when this change comes, 
you are more at peace, enjoying the things you have taken hold of without worrying whether you will lose them or not. It's so important, and I want you to hear this this morning, it's so very important for us to balance our life. I think, especially right now, we have to not focus on the negativity and all the problems and all the changes that are going on. We've got to focus on our Lord because that's where we get all of our help from. It's not from man. It's not from your relationships. It's from Jesus because he makes all those things better. He makes them work. Sometimes we're working so hard. And I'm not saying that we should not work with excellence. But work should not consume you. You should be consumed by God. The work is always going to be there. I just said he'll supply all your needs, so what are you worrying about? You got nothing to prove to anybody. Glory to God. Once again, it's so important to balance your life and find quality time to enjoy all the blessings and the goodness of God. See, if you really desire to enjoy all God has for you, for you then you must learn how to close stages, chapters, and stories in your life because that is what it means to really live. I'm talking about getting out of your comfort zone and once again getting continually into the presence of God so when change really comes, it would be like stepping stones into a fresh new chapter in your life. Please repeat this after me if you would. It's time for a change. Let's try it again. Once again, it's time for a change. It's time for a change. We need to stop being so stubborn. Staying in those places that we get comfortable and used to. And just step out and do something new and something fresh. You'd be surprised how your life would change. So I believe the only way to live fully is by being anchored to the Lord and not to the life that does not do anything for you. I believe it's human nature, but one of the things that holds us back from the change is the fear of uncertainty. However, from a believer's point of view, I want you to remember that faith destroys fear. And when changes come, we must walk by faith and not by sight, not by what we see. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. So yes, you're working with the God you don't see, but by faith you believe he's already accomplished everything that you need to have done in your life for your family and everything. Yes. And I don't know why you worry about getting a promotion. God already told you that your promotion is coming. I don't know why you're worried about your rent. God said your rent and your mortgage note is going to be paid. I don't know why you're worried about getting fed because God has already said he's already given you the food that you need. And if you don't have it, you can trust God. He'll send somebody to give you that. Is anybody listening to what I'm saying? See, if we really believe that we're followers of Jesus Christ, we'll find somebody to feed, and they won't go hungry. We'll find somebody that needs clothes on their back. See, sometimes we get caught up in the church activities and not involved in really real life. Real life says you need to bring me some clothes, you need to bring me some food, you need to help me find a job. Does anybody listen to what I'm saying? As the children of God, you have the power to do all things through Christ Jesus because nothing's impossible with him. And if you have him in your life or you know him, what you have need of has already been provided. Glory to God. See, as humans, we have a strong desire to control everything around us. But it's really God who's really in control. If you're feeling uncomfortable about change, if you're worried or anxious, you're not alone. There's a whole lot of people out there feeling the same way that you do. Now, see, as I've shared with you before, fear is one of Satan's most used weapons to get us to doubt God. I'll say it again because I want you to get it. 
Fear is one of those weapons that the devil, Satan, Lucifer, uses to cause you to doubt God. When you doubt God, he can't help you. He can only help you if you have faith. You have to believe he is, and he can do what he says he can do. Now, I know sometimes you might be a new Christian, or maybe you haven't experienced Christianity at all. But I came to tell you this morning, if you just step out and take the chance to ask Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, your life will change, and it will change for the better. Because you will experience who Christ really is. See, you operate by faith because you just trust him. But as you trust him, you see him doing things in your life that sometimes is just unimaginable. Right now, as I'm standing before you, I would be the last person probably being a pastor. But God picked me. And I'm blessed for that. And I continue to be blessed. And I'm here this morning to bless you with his word. I came to tell you that you have the power to overcome fear and anxiety with the promises of God. See, as the children of God, we don't have the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I know sometimes we think that we're crazy because your mind begins to play a whole lot of games with you. But that's what we call in, in, in Christianity the battle of the mind. But whether you're in Christianity or not, you don't have a battle of the mind because the enemy is going to come after you. And unfortunately, we're in a time where he's just moving across the earth trying to create as much chaos and evil and, and lies and deception that he can that's possible. But you have to be strong. And know that you've got a sound mind. And that you've got the power, if you're a believer of Jesus Christ, living on the inside of you. Where you can handle anything coming your way. You see, nothing's too hard for God. It may be hard for you, but it's not hard for God. See, we must remember ourselves. That it's not about what we feel. It's about faith. And God being in control. Now, once again, this is why it's so important to study and meditate on God's Word, because it will build up your faith, destroy fear, and anything else Satan brings your way. Now, God's scriptures, in the name of Jesus Christ, watch this now, has divine authority and supernatural power to destroy the attacks of the enemy. I didn't say ordinary power, and I meant it. I meant when you come with Christ, you got some power a little bit. But I'm talking about things you cannot do or even comprehend. I'm talking about the supernatural power of God. Oh, glory to God. You've got to experience him to know what I'm talking about. See, I came to tell someone to stop trying to control everything. Glory to God. I'm going to say it again. Loud and clear over YouTube. You need to stop trying to control everything in your life or somebody else's. Because you cannot. <clears throat> what you need to do is give all your cares and worries and fears over to the Lord because he says that he cares for you. Amen. See, I want you to understand you don't have to continue to fear uncertainty. But just trust God and be prepared to take hold of a brighter tomorrow because you will do better. You have to believe that you can do better. If you came to Christ and you really believe what he says, he says that you're a new creature in him. That the old things have passed away and all things have become new. If you really actually believe that, then you can kick that path behind and continue to move forward to grab hold of the wonderful things that God has already provided for you. See, you got to know that he's already given you everything you need. See, when you are with the Lord, I want you to remember He's going to always be with you through the challenges of change. And you will be better for that experience. See, I believe when we step back and reassess what has really changed, we find that nothing is good or completely bad. Just stay with me. For example, if a specific relationship did not work out for you, then you can begin to think about what you can do now 
that you couldn't do with that person. Or use this moment to learn what you don't want in your life. You may feel like you lost some good things you had with that person. But when God is in control of your life, and other good things will come into your life. New doors of opportunity will open up, and you will discover new paths more suitable for your life. You see, the person you were yesterday is not the person that you are today. Because life changes a person, for the good or bad, depending on the choices. But you have to remember, you have to make the right choice. And the right choice is Jesus. See, we all, human nature always wants to lay the excuses and the problems on somebody else. The reality is, it's you. If you want life to be better, you have to make better decisions. How do you make better decisions? Reading the Word of God and studying that Word and acting out that Word in your life. That's how change, things will change for the better for you. I know it's true because it happened to me. It took me out of the world and with Christ. I never look back. I never care to look back because I'm going to stay with Jesus. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how discouraged sometimes I get. I just get discouraged just like everybody else does. But I know how to get into Jesus and allow him to lift me up. I'm never going to be pushed down and stay down. Are you listening? I love it in the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. When M Moses had... Was, 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 had passed and Joshua was taking over the leadership of, of the Israel nation. And, and it's so awesome what God told him. He said, be courageous, be bold. He commanded that for us. We have to be brave. Yes, things will happen in this life. Will people suffer? Yes, they will. I don't know what else you're learning, but there is suffering in this world. But with Christ, he can get you through it. It's nothing like being in the arms of Jesus. Oh, glory. You see, when, you know, the questions that you ask, well, look at this, these choices we made. The one thing I believe will help you deal with relationships and changes and other changes is to stop asking why did he or she leave me? Why did they die? Why did they break up with me? Why did they act like they love me? See, when you ask these kinds of questions, this will not solve or change anything in your life. And it definitely will not make your life better. Matter of fact, it won't even make you feel better. We must come to the realization that the past is the past. Let it go. And don't continue to be frustrated trying to figure out why, but just keep moving forward into the best life with Jesus. God has the best life for you. You just got to press. Sometimes you just got to push hard. Push hard. Stand up, whether it's physically, mentally, or spiritually. You got to just stand up and just push yourself forward. Sometimes just taking one step will help you move forward in this life. Don't take any steps back, though. I believe another way you can deal with change is to let go of things or even people that don't add anything in your life. I'm talking about your life being worse and more frustrating when certain people or things are in your life which add no real value. Now this may seem simple, but when you throw away old things that remind you of bad relationships, delete some photos and texts, even donate clothes that you're not wearing, move to a new apartment or home and build some better relationships with people who know God and moving forward in life, then I believe you are beginning to embrace change. I'm talking about not being anchored to a place or a person where you don't fit anymore and consulting God for guidance and begin to build on your present and begin to map out your future. Now Jeremiah the prophet shared with us in the Old Testament a hope for our future which I'd like to share with you right now, which I believe is relevant for today as it was in the Old Testament time. I'm talking about Jeremiah 29, 11, and I love it. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. Here's what it says. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being, 
and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. So you can be confident and hopeful with the Lord that He has pre-designed a perfect plan for your life and has a good future just for you. We need to stop coming up with excuses and recognize the Lord provides everything we need and more to bless ourselves and especially other people. When you continually stay in the presence of God, you will receive wisdom, spiritual guidance, and maturity, strength, good health, and your financial need will be met. It's time to embrace change and make it a part of yourself, your life, and even your world. It's also time to leave the past behind and begin to move forward. Take hold of the fresh beginning God has provided for us every single morning. Now let me show you what that is in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. It says this, It is because of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not consumed. Because His tender compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great and beyond measure is your faithfulness. I don't know if you can't know, it's a lot there. But I want you to understand that every single morning you have a new beginning. But what are you doing with it? You have a fresh new start. You can start all over again with Jesus. Are you listening to me? See, I want you to know there's hope for our present and future because God's anger is for a very short time. But his loving kindness will never cease or come to an end. God will always be good to those who humbly wait for him and repent of their wrongdoing and return back to him. God will also have compassion on those who suffer when his dis discipline has accomplished its purpose. We know we're not perfect. And on this journey of life, we're going to make some mistakes. And God is right there to discipline us. But his discipline is wonderful because he gives you correction if you're listening to his voice to do what's right so that you don't have to go round and around doing the same old wrong thing over and over again, being stuck in a terrible zone. Let me share with you something that will help you better understand where I'm going with this message this morning. I believe eventually everyone ages, and I know some changes take place. And the enemy tries to make you feel old. I want you to know that I've gone through this change when I looked in the mirror. I saw a little gray hair, and I lost a little hair, and saw a few wrinkles on my face, and can't walk the two-mile walk I used to walk. But you know what? There's still God. It may seem odd to some people, but I've always declared over my life that age is just a number. And this is how I look at life and go through life not knowing, see that I know God's with me. Everybody ages. But I meant it, it's just a number. Now, you may not be able to do all the things that you used to do, but you can do something. See, I believe age will not stop me from doing what God has called me to do. And I will continue to press forward to do His good work no matter what the circumstances that show up in my life. As we age, we must learn to better balance what we do. But it's not over until God says it's over. Mm -hmm. I don't know if somebody needs to hear this. God said it's not over till he says it's over. If he gave you work to do, he'll give you what you need to do the work in spite of what it looks like in the moment. See, that's faith. See, I'm talking about eating better, getting some exercise, keeping our love and joy and peace through Christ will help us enjoy life as we age. <clears throat> if you trust God, he will help you understand that change is good and not harmful. You see, I'm so thankful I have a relationship with Jesus who helped me understand that if I looked at change the way the enemy wanted me to see it, I would see loss and not gain. See, the enemy wants you to feel bad, depressed, discouraged, because you have lost your youth, your beauty, your strength, and anything else that sounds negative. Now, let me tell you what the truth of the matter is. 
See, with Christ, we are complete in Him. We have more wisdom, more strength, more beauty, because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And we are the beholders. And we're looking more beautiful and handsome than ever. And all the people said, what? Amen. Amen. See, the enemy is out to make you think because you're older that you have lost God's goodness, but that will never happen. First Chronicles says this, Chronicles 16, 34. I'm almost done. It says this in King James. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. And in David, he wrote in the Psalms 23, 6. He tells us this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And that means you and me. All the days of our life. And I and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, these are two powerful scriptures. Declaring God's goodness will never leave us, making the enemy's claims a lie. See, if the enemy can cause believers to think they're too old to meet others' needs, spread the gospel, or defeated because of their age, he's really hoping that this mindset will cause them to give up and stop trying. I came to tell somebody this morning, I'm not ever stopping. I'm not ever stopping. Putting the enemy on notice, I'm not stopping. I'm going forward and do what God's called me to do. I came to tell you this is no more than another demonic attack from Satan. And God will not let this happen to his faithful people. I believe if we take closer look at change from God's point of view, rather than the world's, we will look at change in a more positive way. When we look at change, which is God's way, then we do not look at what we have lost, but what we have gained, meaning this, valuing that which we have changed and know we've become better. I really believe if you embrace change, it'll make you better. When you fight it, it's not going to help you. We must challenge ourselves once in a while and look at our lives, acknowledging that we are changing and we will continue to change. The reason for this is to identify if we are embracing change for the better for ourselves and those people who are around us. I believe the purpose of change is not just for us, but for everyone we come in contact with in this life. You see, the change I'm talking about goes on throughout our life to mature us spiritually by shaping us into the image of Jesus Christ. The thoughts, words, actions that Jesus displayed in his life serves as a model for how we can face the challenge of change. Now, Jesus was completely committed and surrendered to the Holy Spirit. And it was his main purpose in life to always do his Father's will. Now, let me show you where I'm going. When we truly surrender to Jesus Christ by walking in his footsteps, then we learn from him and his Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. And this focuses us on doing his will and not our own. Now, I want you to understand you cannot do any of this by yourself. Because it takes you and the power of the Holy Spirit. As a follower of Jesus Christ, we have access once again to supernatural power that the world does not have, allowing us to effectively deal with change as we walk with Jesus. I do not want you to be disappointed in change, because every Christian starts out as babes in Christ, and not able really to understand everything that they're coming in contact with. But as you walk with Jesus, you will mature spiritually, and you put away childish things. We should be forever grateful that we have a personal relationship with Jesus, knowing that by faith, he has already blessed us with everything once again that we need to deal with in the challenge of change. I want you to always remember that our change starts in our mind. So this means we must change the way we think and see ourselves. This will require a change in how we measure ourselves and what we value in this life. We live in a world of darkness and evil, but we must make sure not to get caught up in these things, like materialism, <clears throat> money, power, and selfishness. 
As we continue to build a relationship with Jesus, our values become wanting what He wants and doing what He does. I believe this will keep us from the darkness when the change comes and keep us in the light of Christ. It's the worldly material things that lose their shine in the light of Jesus. One of the greatest examples of the change, this challenge of change I've been talking about, is in the book of Acts, when Saul of Tarsus met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Now Saul, commonly known as Paul the Apostle, was a Pharisee who participated in the persecution of early disciples of Jesus, of Christians, and also approved the execution of Stephen. Now one day Saul was on his way down the road to Damascus to destroy some Christians. And he had a wonderful encounter with Jesus that changed his life forever. Now this change was seen one moment and then becoming blind the next, causing Saul to no longer be able to hold on to his worldly possessions, such as education and theology teaching, because of this encounter with Jesus. I'm talking about a lifelong change, leaving the past behind and gaining a new understanding of who Jesus Christ was. Now, Paul went on to be a disciple for Jesus and a writer of many of the books in the New Testament that have blessed many people seeking real truth and the one true God. Although Saul lost his sight during his encounter with Jesus, he saw Jesus for who he really was. He began to embrace the challenge of change and later the Lord gifted him with new eyes to continue to see the truth, the way, and the life. I came to tell you that we will continue to be faced with the challenge of change, but I want you to remember God loves you and desires the best for you, so embrace the change like Paul. God told us there is a season for everything, so it's our responsibility to make sure we are always ready for change by pleasing God in everything we say and in everything that we do. This will require us to embrace change and live our lives according to God's plan and purpose that we might do his good work and be prepared for anything in this world. So many times I've noticed that people are trying to be somebody else. But I came to tell you, why not be you? Because God has intentionally aligned your life details with his love, his commands, and his purpose, and his plan. God has designed you to be victorious in this life. And the challenge of change is programmed in your spiritual DNA to help you change for the better. I want you to know that age has nothing to do with change, but it is our willingness to allow God's Spirit to lead us and help us clearly to see the challenge of change as a positive and not a negative. It's time for a change, so get out of the way, hold on to it, because God got it. Well, I've run out of time for today, but before I go, I'd like to offer you the opportunity to become one of the followers and believers of Jesus Christ. So I know if you do this and take hold of this opportunity, I know that you will be blessed. And also, if you're someone who may be backslidden or kind of moved away from Christ, I'd like you also to consider to repeat this prayer after me. Now, the prayer we're going to pray we call the sinner's prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ was born and is your son. I believe Jesus died for my sin. And on the third day, rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart and take control of my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, from this moment forward, I recognize you as my Lord and Savior. And I desire to rule and reign with you forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. If you have repeated this prayer after me, now you are part of the wonderful kingdom of God and what I'd like you to do is go out and find a church in your area or contend, come here and, and, and fellowship with New Covenant World Ministries at the Hercules Library so that you can begin to build a relationship with Jesus Christ and make sure you take some family and friends with you as well.
And once again, it's been my pleasure today to bring you this message entitled, The Challenge of Change. If this teaching, once again, has been a blessing to you, make sure that you join us next Sunday at 11 a.m. for a wonderful message from our Lord and our Savior. I want you to be blessed. I want you to have a wonderful day. Take care. Be safe out there. I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of you next time. Well, goodbye for now.